everybody, welcome back to Whiskey Central. I am back in the studio, back from my mom's house. Got a little Eagle Rare bottle from her. Got a Seattle Seahawks t-shirt. Reviewing Buffalo Trace this week. So I've got some history for you today, but if you want to skip around to other parts of the video, there's timestamps in the description box below. And if you enjoy whiskey reviews, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new videos. The distillery was founded by Colonel E.H. Taylor in 1870. It was originally known as Old Fashioned Copper, or OFC. Taylor put a lot of money and invested the best of the best equipment, from copper fermentation tanks to column stills and a steam heating system. Buffalo Trace was the first distillery to install a steam heating system for climate control in their warehouses. Unfortunately, Taylor overextended himself and he had to declare bankruptcy in 1877. George Stagg became the owner in 1878, but Taylor was still involved as a partner in the business. Eventually, the relationship between the two men soured and they parted ways in 1886. In 1904, the OFC distillery was renamed to the George T. Stagg Distillery in honor of its previous owner. In 1897, Albert B. Blanton was hired as an office assistant at the age of 16. He worked his way up to plant manager in 1912, and in 1917, the distillery shut down due to prohibition but Blanton bought the company in 1918. He led the company through Prohibition and he even obtained a medical whiskey permit for the company to stay afloat until Prohibition ended. He retired in 1952. In 1983, the George T. Stagg Distillery was sold to Aged International. The master distiller, Elmer T. Lee, who had worked at the distillery since 1949, developed the first single barrel bourbon in 1984, Blanton's. A few years later, with the success of Blanton's, Aged International introduced Elmer T. Lee, Rock Hill Farms, and Hancock's Presidential Reserve Bourbons. Then, in 1992, Sazerac bought the George T. Stagg Distillery and the U.S. distribution rights to the Aged International bourbon brands. In 1997, the company brought in new management for the distillery and started a two-year restoration project. Once the restoration project was complete in 1999, they renamed the distillery to Buffalo Trace and introduced Buffalo Trace Bourbon as their flagship brand. The name is a reference to the paths that early settlers followed that were made by herds of buffalo in the late 1700s. This distillery produces some of the most famous bourbons in the world. Blanton's, the BTAC Collection, Stag Jr., Eagle Rare, and Pappy Van Winkle. But let's get into the details of this whiskey. This bottle will run you about $25. It's owned by Sazerac and it's made in Frankfort, Kentucky. It's aged for about eight years, it's 45% ABV, and this is an undisclosed mash bill. They call it mash bill one. It's 10% or less rye, it's mostly corn, and there's a bit of malted barley to help with fermentation. It's aged in new charred oak barrels, it's non-colored, and it's chill filtered. One of the cool things about the column still at Buffalo Trace is it's 84 inches in diameter. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, to distill American whiskey. All right, well, I'm gonna pour a dram of this, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and I'll be right back. All right, I've let this open up for about 10 minutes. Let's go in for a nose. So there's not much rye spice in here, but I get a little bit of rye spice kind of first, first thing. It smells like a fresh pine board, kind of that, that wood pine smell. But it's really sweet. There's like cherry, some sweet orange, like baked apples. You also get some baking spices, so kind of almost like a little bit of an apple pie. There's also a little floral note in there as well. And then you get those classic vanilla, a ton of caramel. All right, let's go on the palate. Cheers, guys. So there's a bit more rye spice on the palate than there was on the nose. It seems pretty well balanced. There's some oak, but it's very sweet. Got that caramel, a little bit of that floral coming in as well. Maybe a little bit of red fruit too. Let's go for another sip, cheers. Mm. Yeah, this is just a classic tasting bourbon. I would say medium finish. It's got a good mouthfeel. 
But yeah, this is a great dram, especially for the price, so I'm gonna finish it up and I'll be right back with my recommendation. This is a really nice bourbon for $25. It's pretty well balanced and I really enjoy it. I think it's pretty classic for a bourbon profile. It'd be great for cocktails or for sipping neat. I know this is hard to find for some people, so I would not overpay for this bottle. If you can't find it in your area, there are other great options like Elijah Craig or Old Forester 100 that are readily available. But if you can find this in your area for around $25, I think it's a great daily sipper. And if you like this bottle, I think you would like Eagle Rare. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Whiskey Central. Next week, I'll be reviewing Glen Rothis 12. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave it a like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. US distribution rights. Oh, you want distribution rights? Can't get it. Can't get it. Oh boy. We're gonna. This is. It's gonna be a while. I'm like talking with my hands. I don't know why I'm talking with my hands so much. But. <laughs> I don't know. Can you, I really hope you guys can see that. Hopefully they can see that. It's an Eagle Rare bottle. Let me just make sure you guys can see it real quick. I don't know if you can tell it's an Eagle Rare bottle, but it is. So. Super cool, thank you so much, mom. 45% ABV, there's a stupid fly in here. <laughs> that sounded super weird, two year restoration project. Also guys, I put new lights in the studio. These two lights are the same, but these two lights are different. Hopefully it's brighter and looks less shitty. Who knows? Let me know in the comments below if it looks less shitty. That'd be cool. Boom, we're done, we done. Let's go. This bottle's good. I think, I mean, if you really, really like oak on a bourbon, I think this is a little bit oakier. I don't know if that's just cause I suck at this or what, but it just seems a little, not over oaked, but just a little bit oakier. Um, it's not too bad. I mean, 25 bucks, I think this is good. I think it might be a, a little overhyped. I think people overhype it a, a little bit, uh, but yeah, it's good. I mean, 25 bucks. I'd buy it again for sure. I like it. Also, just real quick, finally, personally, have seen my own coins. I got a prototype, but I've I just got the actual coins uh, when I was at my mom's. So I don't know if you guys can see those. It probably will not focus at all. If it does, cool. If not, whatever. But I think they look pretty good. And I finally have the saying on the side. Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't know if you can. Maybe. Maybe this is working. Maybe it's not working. Who knows? But yeah, super dope coins. Very happy with how they turned out. So if you want one, you can become a patron. Links in the description box below. Shameless plug. No, seriously though, all the support I get on Patreon is amazing and it helps make these videos possible. So thank you guys all who have become patrons. You guys are freaking amazing.